Um, I don't, I don't know. That's a really odd question because the, the objective was never, there was never a day where we thought, let's just buy the club. There was a, we, we, when we met a couple of years ago, you know, there was a, a, a pretty, pretty obvious shared vision that we thought it was time for a change. Um, so we just thought that we wanted to put our backs into trying to get a transaction done. But it's not like we, we, we sat at home plotting and dreaming that we could own a football club. Um, I think most of you know we're professional investors. As investors, this is a terrible idea. But as fans and as um, people who really care about the town, the community, we're, we're, we're keen to keen to start a new chapter. So um, I don't know if that's that answers the question. But. Yeah, and we, originally we met through uh, through Tom Shoots, as you'll be aware from the from the original uh, from the original meeting. We didn't know each other before. Uh, so fa families, obviously from from the town, but uh, and again from my perspective, it's very similar. I was looking to try and help, and that's why I did. I, I I gave a call to Tom to offer to help join in, and we ended up uh, in a consortium. And uh, obviously the rest is the rest is a little bit is, is history in terms of uh, Tom stepping away. But you know, I'm delighted to be working with Jason, and we've got we've got a very a very clear shared vision, and we you know very excited to uh, to move things forward. Can you tell us both about your links to the town, please. Yeah. What the club means to you. Oh, cracking. So. Um, we could talk for hours now, Matt. Right? So, <laughs> so we're both lifelong fans. I mean, I came to my first game in '79. Um, I've been a ball boy. I was down a ball boy there in '84. Got spat on by Wolves fans. Got 13 <sighs> pence thrown at me that day. It was a good day. Made a bit of money and um, used to watch my hero Joe Waters. So it's been, you know, it's been a lifetime of supporting the club. And I just, I just, you know, personally for me, it's it's like it's the experience I get when I talk to any fans of the town, which is. It's it's a it's a it's a real source of pride and it's a massive part of my identity, being from the town and being associated with the club, um, and just excited to, to unleash that potential that we, that we know we know we know is there. Now that I've, I mean I've been a fan for 45 years. Um, funny enough, standing here is quite it's quite uh, quite quite poignant really because I used to stand and put my stand with my feet between the uh, the rails of the main stand with my dad in the back of the stand and uh, I've been I've been coming since say since the mid 70s um, and so for me it's always been as Jason said part of part of me it's part of how I'm identified I've, I left the town uh, when I was 18 uh, and but and I come back very very regularly my family's still a lot of my family's still here so for me it's a it's a you know, it's a it's a it's a it's a homecoming of sorts but also uh, also you know, very much a uh, I guess you know, things that you're doing. So we, we wanted to we wanted to come and put our put our uh, put our efforts and hopefully some skills to, to 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 make to make a difference, not just to the club but to the town. Jason mentioned Joe Waters there. Who are your boyhood heroes at the club? Uh, a, a lot of that team. Um, I mean, uh, Tony Ford was was one that I love. My my sister wouldn't wouldn't forgive me unless I said Bobby Cumming uh, mm -hmm. as well, who who was uh, who was definitely her favourite. But uh, and, and, over, and over the years, you know, I, I've 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 liked the iconic strikers, the Drinkles, the Mendonkers, the the Hearns, the Connells. Um, but yeah, oh, they're 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 all they're all heroes to to you know to, to everyone in the, everyone in the community. So, can you give us an insight, Jason, please? How hard has it been to get to where you are today? In, in what respect, Matt? How long has it taken you to negotiate what you've negotiated today? Yeah. Um all negotiations take a bit of time. To, to be honest with you, Matt, what we're trying to do is, is almost draw a line on everything that's come today, before today. I mean, we're keen to focus on going forward. So it's been, um, you know, what I would state is, is that, you know, it's been an unorthodox negotiation. I think some of that's played out in public, unfortunately. But, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of behind us now. So, so we're, both, we're both professional investors and, and, and you know, and negotiating is part of what we do for a living. Um, so most negotiations have twists and turns. This one's been unusual, but um, yeah, glad we're here and keen to get on with the work now. How do you feel about um, purchasing a, a, a National League club? Because I presume when you started yeah. negotiations, obviously, it was a football league. Yeah, look, like all the fans, when we looked at the results over the last last few months, we've been, there's been a real source of pride of what Paul's put together and there's been no lack of effort, we've thought, and, um, and that gives us lots of encouragement for the for the coming season. I think we'd love to stay in the league, you know, but um, we're also not scared of the challenge, you know. So we were realistic about the probability and the challenge that Paul took on, you know, in January. So it is what it is, you know. And again, we're up for it. We're committed to the work, committed to investing, uh, and, and putting personal commitment and time into making this work. So um, disappointed, but it's a reality. So we've got a job to do now, and we'll get on with that. And what are the priorities now that you're in the club? Priorities three, we need to take stock of what's here. I mean, that's clearly the first, the first thing. It's our first, first hour, first, first, no, first moments now. So, take stock of what's here in terms of staff resources. Um, 
we want to look clear, clearly look at um, the infrastructure and give Paul the the tools he needs to be able to to be able to make a, a high you know, high performance team and to and to, re and to really really build 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 something here. Um, and that you know, is right from the pitches. We're already starting some work, um, which you know on the on the on the pitches on the surface here at Bondle Park and also at Cheapside. Uh, training ground is something that we you know we. I'd say we were, we were, we, were, we wanted to, 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 to we want to improve, um, and it was always it was something that when we did our our due diligence came and it stuck out really as, as something that needed to be to be improved. Um, so it, it's, it's all about looking at the and it's all then centrally it's looking at the culture. It's looking at how we how we how we create a an organisation that uh, that is, is is high performance, and that's that's what we've done in all our careers. We you know we've we're lucky enough to have run have run successful businesses and and been used to having. Uh, high-performing organisations, and that's what we want Grimsby Town to be. How are you expecting running a football club to compare to what you've done in the world of business? So, firstly, look, we're, 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 the, the, one of the characteristics that we're both had through our careers is we, 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 you know, we want to be around people who have better, more detailed knowledge than us around the specifics. So, we've got a gentleman, uh, Mark Palmer, who's going to help us in the near term on the football side. You know, we've got a great relationship with Paul already. We're enjoying that. We think we're very aligned on our values. Um, and then we'll just we'll just get external knowledge and gaps in our but we're quick learners. We spent our whole careers learning in I'm, this is my fourth industry, my last one that I've, that I've had a bit of success in. So I'm keen to learn. But the big the biggest thing is we'll we'll get talent in, we'll get people who are the main experts to do the work. And what we know is we know about um, building high performance cultures as Andrew said. We understand values led organisations and um, and, and we know how to raise money as well. So for us, we'll focus on our own capabilities and then we'll get support and expertise around us that can do the jobs that we we don't have the talent or ability for. And there'll be lots of that. Yeah, we're not we're not going to we're not going to second guess the the football side. You know, we're, we're not we're not experts on that. I mean, clearly, as fans, we all we all have we all have views. But uh, I, I echo what Jason says. We you know we're very we're very much looking to, to bring the right infrastructure, the right people, and 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 and, and work with the work with the team we've got here as well. So. So I'm a bit out of sorts because the sun's shining. Is that putting everyone else off today? <laughs> I haven't been blunder apart for years where the sun's shining like this. I feel like it's quite an unusual experience for me. So. Anyone more for any more? Yeah. Hi, I'm Lauren from Hi, Lauren. Media. First of all, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to ask, even as a club that's just been relegated, um, there's a huge amount of optimism with your arrival. Um, how do you feel with the weight of expectation that's on your shoulders? So, you, you, I mean... From my point of view, you know, you, you, you wouldn't be an entrepreneur if you didn't like taking challenges on. Our whole careers are epitomised by taking on challenges that other people shy away from. Um, we're realistic as well, Lauren. Yeah, for us, we'll be judged on our delivery. So there's no expectation. We're going to make no wide sweeping promises about what we'll deliver. We'll turn up, we'll do the work, we'll put the hours in. And, uh, and we'll be delivered on, well, we'll be judged on our performance. So, so for me, um, you know, we, 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 we've had careers of responded to pressure and um, happy to be judged. I'd also state that we're not wedded to this person who we're doing this because we, we think it's right for the community and the town. So you might have seen in some of the press releases that I, uh, we, we talked about the chair role. I'm going to take it on for the first three years. Um, but like, I, I, you know, if there's someone better comes along or someone can do a better job, you know, we'll recruit that to do the job. So for now, you know, we're going to run this as a partnership. We'll make decisions together, shoulder to shoulder, and use our complementary skills. But look, we've got no monopoly on keeping these roles. We want what's best for the organisation for the next 140 years. So we can get better people than us to do the jobs or take the club on. We're ready for that. So we like a challenge, you know. As, you know, that's what we look to do. But um, um, hopefully, it's going to be a partnership with the whole community, the town. And so we can we can build on build on our own capabilities, but it's, it's going to be it's going to take the whole town to make the success, and we'll we'll help bring people together hopefully to do that. And the start the start of that is we want to we want to actually engage properly with the fans, and so we're going to be putting out a fan survey to to uh, to kind of get people's ideas and to re and to really under understand what the fans are looking for in their experience as a fan and as a, and at Blundell Park specifically, and and try and address those uh, those questions and concerns and, and 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 deal with them. So it's it's a very much a can can do approach but you know, I guess from, from an expectation perspective we don't we don't want people to to run away we're not going to set as Jason said we're not going to set any wild targets we just want to improve every day and that and that's that, that's something that we you know strive to do in our in our in our lives overall so so we just want to improve every day and are you hoping to build a new stadium and if so when and where will it be I was waiting. It's about 15 <laughs> minutes in for that. So thank you. Thank you for waiting at least. That's good of you. Um, look, where um, Andrew's already said, we want to focus on the infrastructure today, the playing surfaces, 
the training facilities and making sure Paul's got the right budget to be you know the sort of top echelons of next year's budgets as well I think then for us we want to assess the, the, the options for a stadium. We're saying we're ambitious for the club and for the community, um, but again, we'll assess. There's been a lot of hype around what can be delivered. I think people have over, over promised on some of those things historically. So we're keen to assess all the options and then make the decision that's right for the long term for the club. So we'll make sure we do that pretty quickly. Um, the caveat to that is that you know we've got to make sure we're investing in the right areas to make sure it's sustainable as well the investment and make sure the club is left in a better shape when we move on as well so the, 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 the ground is a, is a priority for us but I think for us today playing surfaces team for Paul and then like working on the culture because in the culture and the organization is where everything else will be derived from so but we'll get to the stadium stuff in relative short order but it's not it's not a number one priority today um, and one thing I know that some readers are keen to know is, is there going to be a reduction in season ticket prices any time soon? Well, that season tickets is something that we're, we're currently under under review. It's one of the first things on our plate to, to look at, and we'll be coming out with some news on that on that next week. I mean, one of the things we, we're definitely thinking about is um, is rewarding the, those people that uh, that renewed their season tickets this season, uh, and and gave us and gave you know, gave support to the club in their their time of need. So we're, look, we're looking very carefully across the board to offer a you know a compelling competitive uh, pricing structure because we want to fill fill the ground. I mean, that's that's fundamentally what, what we, we what we want to do. I mean, we, we've all been at Blundell Park when it's been been full and bouncing, and that's that's where we want to want to get it back to. That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, James, Hi, James. Nice to meet you. Uh, obviously, you were involved in the appointments of Paul Hurst in, in the winter. How closely have you been working alongside during this process? Um, well, at arm's length. We've been in touch, but we've tried not to muddy the waters. You know, we want to be respectful. You know, the organisation, we weren't formally part of that. So we've had sort of conversations with Paul and trying to be supportive, but, um, you know, Paul's had to sort of tread a delicate line between trying to make sure he had his, um, you know, his responsibilities to exist in shareholders. I think he's done a brilliant job of that. Um, so we've been in touch, and, and the important for, for us was always that we wanted to be at work with the manager that was aligned with our values, hard work, you know, respect, dignity, and, uh, and sort of a performance orientation. Um, and we're really, we're really certain that we've got that. So um, that's, a, that's a long way of saying that we've been in touch, we've had conversations, but um, we've tried not to get in his way over the last couple of months. But I, I would say I'm, I'm personally delighted with what I've seen from him as an individual and from the players you know, in the running. We, the results haven't gone in our way, as we all know, but I think from a worth ethic, we've definitely seen an improvement there. And that'll be part of something that we'd want to see in any football team going forward. And I mean, obviously, he has got a lot of plans, not just on the playing side. So, how soon do you envisage being able to sit down with him? Uh, we just came from a meeting with him, James. So, yeah. so, so that's happened already. So, so, and we'll be meeting again uh, over the next couple of days. So, um, open dialogue now on all the things that Paul, and not just Paul, by the way, the whole organisation. We, we met all the team here today. You know, again, we've drawn a line under historical events today as an opportunity to reinvent this organisation, which is what we intend to do, and it's an opportunity for everyone to come along on that journey. So it's not just Paul, it's everyone associated with the club, including you guys, including everyone in the town. We want to reset the relationships and start to build and improve this organisation, and that's going to take all of us to do that. So Paul's our number one focus, obviously, for obvious reasons, but it's going to take all of us to make this successful. No better way to show your love can't be there, be there with I follow.